Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to April Education. My name is Chris. CES 2018 was last week in Vegas. CES, for those who might not be aware, stands for Consumer Electronics Show. The biggest annual electronics show in the world where companies and consumers interact and talk about tech products and concepts for the future. So these events are usually lit AF and this year was no exception. Plenty of tech on offer, electric cars, smartphones, drones, motorcycles, foldable TVs, huge 8K OLED displays and so many other things that I can't fit in one video. So I picked a few things that I thought were not worthy at this year's event. I'm not trying to say anything that doesn't make it to this video was it worth it? I'm just trying to say these are the things I found most important to me and I want to share them with you. So number one is smart assistants and there's no better assistant to start with than the Google Assistant. So Google's presence in this 2018 event was felt way before the event started. They allegedly bought all the ad space weeks before the event in Vegas because they are Google and at the event the most notable thing to me was how Google is really trying to push the smart assistant called Google Assistant. Last year they had smart speakers. This year they had smart displays, which is just like smart speakers, but with screens on them. Screens to give you more productivity out of a smart speaker. So these devices do everything you can do with a smart speaker, like playing music or operate connected lights. But they also let you do video calls and watch YouTube videos, look at photos on the smart speaker and stuff like that, all using voice controls, which is awesome. So at their booth, Google had smart displays from Lenovo, LG, Sony, and the Samsung-owned JBL. Google claimed it will also be trying to incorporate Google Assistant in other products in 2018 like LG TVs, smart locks, ceiling fans, and stuff like that. Basically, Google will just be out there in 2018 trying to push Google Assistant into every device they can. Samsung also had a booth showing off their smart assistant, Bixby, pledging that all your devices from your TV, your washing machine, or your fridge will be infused with Bixby, and all linked together by the year 2020, which is interesting. LG had a smart fridge called LG Think with a Q. It had a 29-inch display for you to interact with the fridge. So the fridge keeps an inventory of all the products inside and displays this for you on the screen. So the number two main thing at CES 2018 was an in-screen fingerprint reader. The fingerprint scanner under the main display of your smartphone has been a major talking point over the last few years as phones and manufacturers are trying to move towards completely bezel-less displays. No one has quite been able to do it yet, but at CES 2018, a Chinese company called Vivo turned up with a smartphone with a fingerprint reader under the display. Most of the people who tried it claimed it wasn't as fast as what they were used to, but hey, they nailed it and it can always be improved with time. This will definitely open doors for companies that want to go fully bezel-less without putting the fingerprint scanner at the back of the phone in 2018. I won't be surprised if Apple or Samsung takes this approach in one of the 2018 flagships. The Huawei Mate 10 Pro was around as well at the Huawei booth to be officially introduced to the American market. A very high-end flagship from the Chinese company, the first smartphone with a Kirin 970 chipset, 6-inch AMOLED display, 4 or 6 gigs of RAM, dual cameras at the back, and all the beefy specs you expect from a top-of-the-range flagship. Number three also involves a smartphone, but I kind of feel like it deserves its own category because of the uniqueness of this innovation. It's Razorphone's Project Linda. Remember Razorphone from 2017, the newcomer in the smartphone space that scooped two awards at the MKBHD Smartphone Awards? That company was at CES with a device that looks like a laptop, with a display, the keyboard, a battery, two USB-C ports on either side, no processor, no speakers, and no RAM because it uses all these from the Razer phone which fits into a space on the trackpad area to power up the device. So the screen of the phone becomes a touchpad and the phone's display is moved to the large display on the device. This is obviously meant to improve the gaming experience with larger display and a keyboard. The RGB keyboard also looks sick, I have to say, but it's kind of hard to see how this is going to transition into a finished product that people can actually buy unless Razer phone is prepared to keep the design of their phone the same for the next two, three, even four years. So number four was TVs. Lots of TVs at CES 2018. CES always has great TVs. Gigantic TVs dominated the space as the top brands were going head to head with mind-blowing technologies. LG for instance had a rollable TV, a 65 inch 4K OLED TV that literally rolls into a box like a poster. Well the whole idea behind this is to have a TV that disappears when it's not being watched and so that it stops interfering with the decor or wherever it is with a blank black screen. There's no price or release date for this and like many other things at CES. And while LG was rolling their TVs, Samsung had a TV dubbed 
the wall and with good reason it's a 146 inch led modular tv before you talk about it being modular 146 inches of tv is just insane that's enough to replace an entire wall in a studio for instance that's more than 10 feet wide and 6 feet tall of pure led tv then the fact that it's modular means that the tv is comprised of smaller sections which are joined together seamlessly to make up the whole 146 inches of tv you can disassemble one or two sections to have a smaller tv and return them at will when you need that huge display that's crazy, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> So both companies also showcase a couple of 8K TVs, which is dope. Nvidia was also around with a 65 inch gaming display, which had 120 Hz refresh rate, which is great for gaming. There were plenty of other TVs as well for many different companies and from the same companies I've talked about already, but I obviously can't talk about all of them in detail in one video. So that pushes me to number five, robots. Plenty of robots at CES 2018 robots to do almost anything for you. This robot arm, for instance, from Bolt, can hold a heavy camera for you and record for you scenes that you couldn't capture if you held the camera with your bare hands, and that was awesome. You can move the robot arm in real time, or you can pre-program the moves into the system beforehand before you start shooting, which is dope, and it's gonna take videography to the next level in 2018. There were robots to play indoor games with you as well, like Scrabble or even Ping Pong. A couple of dancing and stripper robots also made it to CES, welcome to 2018. But the main thing that crosses my mind when I see robots like this is how far machine learning and artificial intelligence has come and how far we are going in 2018 and future years. I hope most of the stuff I've discussed will develop from just concepts into real products that people can buy. There was plenty of more tech at CES 2018 including electric cars, motorcycles, drones, headphones and stuff like that. But these are my top 5 most impressive things. I'll try my best to get my hands on any tech I can and share it with you in a review. But that's it for now. Stay tuned for that by hitting the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching. Leave your comments and questions in the comments box below this video. And don't forget to subscribe. My name is Chris and I will talk to you guys soon.